Okay, I have it at right at three. So um, I'd like to call this meeting to order and ask the roll be called, please. Mike Hammer. Present. Here Present. Okay. That being said, we have, I don't know that we have an, a quorum, but uh, we certainly have enough to at least address some of the uh, things on the agenda. So the uh, second item on the agenda is approval of the June 27th, uh, 2019 min minutes. Um, does anyone have any additions or uh, Anything that would, they'd like to take away for, or take out of the minutes? Um, I just have a question about it. There was, um, I've highlighted three takeaways okay. from last meeting. What's the protocol for, I guess, follow-up? These items weren't listed in the agenda, I guess, unless they're old business, new business. But what happens typically with follow-up items? For what specifically? Um, the three things I've mentioned, or I've got here, actually two, sorry. One was we talked about uh, putting street lights in along Bartlett Road by the farm there? At DuPage County, we've sent emails out to them. Okay. So typically we'll go through those, yeah. old business, new business, but a lot of it is, a lot of the issues weren't things we had control over, so I sent our GIS layer to Google Maps for okay. the bike path, and then it's really in their hands at that point when yeah. they're going to update it. Okay, so that really, we don't know if there's an action Correct, because a lot of things okay. you guys ask, direct us to do it, and so yeah. we take it up to that point. If we hear something back, we'll let you know. Okay, because um, the other thing was um, the new trail that they built by Lakewood Mills. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about doing a curb cut where it terminates on the east end. Right, right, uh, the Lakewood Mill where it's on Ariana. It's this, I, I don't remember the name of the street off the top of my head. Yeah, but It's Ariana, Ariana. Drive. Okay. that it dead ends into. So is that something that's going to happen, or what's the, what's the action there? Uh, so people have been walking over it, but it's not intended yeah. for that. So we're not going to promote, because a curb cut there would be a curb cut to nowhere, just onto the street. So we want to promote people to use the sidewalk. So see. Okay. when the contractor actually comes in to finish the landscaping mm -hmm. parts, okay. that'll be sodded and... All that stuff, so. Okay. Because it looked like there's, it was beaten down, and maybe that's just the construction equipment. That, yeah, that's all it was. Uh, that did that. Okay. And then the third action was um, the Google Map updates for the paths. Yeah, I, like I said, I sent yeah. the layer to them. Okay. It's Google. They get to things when they get to things. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> they don't typically even get back to you and say, yes, we've added it. Yeah. You send it to them, and then as time permits on their end, all of a sudden you'll go on there and you're like, oh, they finally added my information. Okay. So they don't, they don't give you any sort of feedback. They just, you get the stock response, thank you for sending us your update. Yeah. Okay. So. I just didn't know what the protocol was for <clears throat> closing items out like that. Okay. Um, if you'd like, we can kind of add those to old business, new business for okay. the specific items. Just so we don't lose sight of things. And okay. Great, thank you. Well, any other questions, Sean? No. That's um, I'm assuming we can just approve the previous minutes with even only John and I being able to vote. Yes. Uh, um, so. You can still approve them even if you weren't there. You can, What's still, that? You can still vote on them even though you weren't there. Okay. So. Um, all right. And then. Uh, Motion to approve. I'll second it. So. And I'm assuming Barry's abstaining. I, I am abstaining. Yeah. Um, so. I would say that our, the, the uh, approval, of the, the, we've approved the uh, June 27, 2019 min minutes. We good with that? A little harder when we don't have a full when Bruce and, <laughs> Bruce and Dan are here. So, okay, that being said, I think we're up to public comment. And uh, we have one of our former, yep. former committee members here. Terry Witt, and why don't you step up, introduce yourself, say your name, address, and tell us what you got to say, Terry. Okay. Terry Witt at 471 Southwestern Avenue in Bartlett, and I'm a bicycle rider. So anyway, I'd, I've got a couple of things. One, I'd, I'd like to say that we missed a golden opportunity this summer to show people 
that Bartlett is a bicycle-friendly community. And what I'm talking about is, is DuPage County did a very nice job of resurfacing the Bond Avenue, South Bartlett, and Stearns. Really, not, it's smooth asphalt. Now we can kind of cruise along at 15, 20 miles an hour on our bikes. The cars can also cruise along at 35, 40 miles an hour on that resurfaced. Now, DuPage County, the state of Illinois even, and Bartlett have complete streets policies. And in our policy, uh, incorporate the needs of all users during blah, 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 including pavement resurfacing, restriping, if the safety and convenience of users can be improved within the scope of the work. And after the repaving, DuPage County restriped all those streets exactly as they were before. Missing a golden opportunity on South Bartlett Road, which as in our transportation oriented district shows that on street bike lanes would be a good addition to Main Street, which is South Bartlett Road, from West Bartlett Road to Stearns Road. But we got the same stripe piece. Three lanes that are, I guess, about 10, 11 feet wide, that could have been made into two five-foot bike lanes with two car lanes in the center. Now, it would, if they were there, of course, as a bicycle rider, it'd be nice, but I think it's for other people to see that we are promoting bicycle friendliness. And the effect of bringing those three lanes down to two for cars also has an effect of slowing the cars down. Because they're going 40 miles an hour. Now they give me three feet, but it's the, the visual thing. And it was an opportunity that we missed. So uh, I do want to mention that there is going to be a complete streets webinar on Tuesday, October 1st, that anybody can go to from their home. Putting people first is the title of it. And I can, I can send a, a copy over to, over to the village, who can then forward it on out to the committee members. If you'd like to sign up, it's really easy to click to go on. The other thing I've got is bike sharing. And about three or four years ago, staff brought up the idea of bike sharing in Bartlett. And even I kind of thought, well, okay, someday maybe. Well, someday is coming. I mean, not only is it proliferating through all the cities in the world, it's coming to the suburbs, Oak Park, Evanston, Itasca, Aurora, the Cook County Forest Preserve even did some bike sharing. And I just saw today a notice that the INM Canal is going to be fitted out with bike sharing for people to go along the INM Canal. So it's something that's coming. And CMAP has been very involved, but they're kind of passing off their work to Kane County, who has developed and created the Chicagoland Bike Sharing Forum, and their first meeting is going to be Monday, October 21st, from 10 to noon, at the Government Center there in Geneva. I'll forward that over to Christy, too. Oh, okay. And if anybody on the committee would like to go, it's a chance. I mean, I can see metro stations all over getting bike share, you know, up and down the Fox River Trail. Aurora is just the first. Right. I know right now, the last KCOM meeting I went to, they were focusing on doing bike sharing along the Fox River. Yeah. That's what their plan was. Yeah. And it makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Somebody could come from Chicago to Aurora, bicycle up to Crystal Lake or wherever. Mm -hmm. 
turn in their bike share, jump on the train, and head back to Chicago. That's a nice thing. We could have bike share at Metra for people who work in Brewster Creek, and a bike share in Brewster Creek, back and forth, and the people in Brewster Creek want to go for lunch, they take bike share and they go over to Dogfather or Sonic or something. So, so there are lots of different opportunities for growth in that region, and I think maybe it's a good subject for a future, future meeting. So anyway, thanks for my three minutes. You know, I, I let you go a little longer. That's okay, Terry. We're good with it. Okay. All right. Thank you for thank you for your Thanks, comments. Uh, so we had the Forest Preserve and the Park District. Do any of you guys have anything to update us on? I'm Mark Decker, a landscape architect with the Forest Preserve District. Um, the first item that I have an update on is the North Central DuPage Regional Trail through Pratt's Wayne. Uh, we did get our uh, phase one engineering approval from IDOT, so now we'll be proceeding with phase two um, as soon as they, they approve the local agency agreement. And we're still targeting construction in 2021. Um, that will depend on the IDOT approvals process and also getting our license from ComEd to cross their property at, at the intersection with the Prairie Path. Um, and they won't review that until we get the final engineering plans. Um, the second item uh, was discussed in the last meeting, the trail along Bartlett Road by Wayne Grove Forest Preserve. Um, I spoke with Kevin Stowe, who is our Director of Land Preservation, and um, our Manager of Land Preservation, and I guess that was a 20-year license that was granted in 1985 that expired in 2005, and we don't currently have an agreement for the trail through the forest preserve. Um, the preserve property extends to the center line of, of Bartlett Road, so we would like to continue those discussions to have a new, instead of a license, have an easement approved, um, and that, that was both between the uh, Village of Bartlett and Bartlett Park District. Um, the most recent draft agreement was sent last October to Kelly O'Brien and Dan Dingus, Dingus, is that? Dingus. Dingus, um, and we haven't heard back. So we're waiting on further, I don't know if you have an, uh, any. Okay. Okay, but the, the discussions regarding resurfacing that trail or adding lights, none of that would be able to proceed on our property without having an agreement in place, so. Tyler, can you make a note, or staff, can you make a note of that to Dan so that we can get in contact with Dan about what's going on? So that's all the update that I have, unless yeah. there are any questions. Thank you. And to refresh my memory, that was the trail right here. Um, it's just south of that. I the farm right between the yeah. There's about a three library and I think it's about 330 feet okay. of, of property that's the forest preserve. And like I said, we own to the center line hmm. of the road. Okay, so assuming that there is an agreement. There was an agreement. It, well, there was. It expired there, in 2005. Okay, so assuming that they renew it for X number of years, is that on a plan to rebuild it or light it or just? That's, that's to maintain it, to stay, oh, gotcha. have a trail there. I understand. Um, understand okay so at any of the resurfacing terms adding lighting that would have to all be in discussion in the the new agreement Understood. The okay. agreement okay so good thank you good oh and thank you for the trail in uh, Hawk Hollow the connector trail oh, yeah. that was it, I, I, I lost count there were about 300 homes and I stopped counting mm -hmm. um, right. that now have access to the North Central DuPage regional trail so thank you any updates from the park district? No updates. No. Okay. Very good. All right. Then that brings us to our fourth point on the agenda, the old business, new business. And I'll turn this over to staff. And uh, we'll start off with the status report on the bike path maintenance. All right. So we brought an updated version of the slightly updated version of the maintenance plan. Uh, really, there's a couple things of note. 
the ones that are colored gray were completed. So when we did the new water main, the bike paths on Stearns got replaced. So those are all brand new. And uh, the portion of the pipe pipeline over here that was recently completed. Right now, uh, Public Works is contacting uh, contractors for the path off Wallace Court because we actually own all the way to um, Centennial, right there? It's, Centennial yeah. School. Centennial's uh, parking lot. So it's a little bit more than what we originally thought and with the tightness of the path and the difficulty, that one <coughs> I don't think our staff could actually do, but the one on the ComEd path, we're thinking our staff could do patching and stuff like that, so we're hoping to get that in. When you say hope, is it this year? Is it next year? Is it in October? The hope would be, yeah, this year. So as long as the plants for, stay for open. Complete, and for resurfacing is what you're saying. Then. Resurfacing, patching, depending on what is needed. Well, then what is it? Because under patching, you have no, and you're talking about Wallace Court, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that one would need to be completely resurfaced. So that one, and because of how it is in there, it would need, that one would need to be done by a contractor. Questions for Tyler, John. So is that going to be done? I guess is that is that so? As we've talked in the past, I think there's a budget of about forty thousand dollars a year for bike path maintenance, mm -hmm. and that's thirty thousand. So is that, is that uh, once we obtain all the quotes, depending on how it works out, we might have to reach out to the park district if they have their portion as well. Mm -hmm. For maintenance if they still have that available otherwise we'll do what we can with what we have left so this fall still that's the hope okay i do too <laughs> yeah. i think it depends what the bids come in at yeah so we can just see how much we can get done and what the best use of the money is we've gone out to bid on it then have we or not right now just uh um, calling out for quotes and that's just for material, because right, we're going to do it in-house later. Not, not, not that, that one. one. What's that? Not that one. Not that one. Okay. No, that one a contractor would have to do. Okay. And so the, the other ones in yellow, the ComEd. What, why are those in yellow? Are those, those ones are the ones we're planning on having staff do. This year still. Yeah. Okay. Great. That'd be a good accomplishment. Four of those taken care of this year, that's good. Are those 19,300 per area? Yeah, but that was also, when this was originally done, that was assuming contractors would do all of it. This, that, so the cost significantly decreases if staff does it. Then you're just paying material. Part of what we were able to do with the village by decreasing brush pickup was to allow the public works mm -hmm. people to then have a uh, paver and do some of the bike path paving themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was looking at that thinking, well, there's 60 grand right there and 30, so we got 90, but we only have a budget of 40 or 50. I was kind of thinking, eh, what are we thinking? So these numbers, the, the, the 60, approximately 60, are accurate than Tyler, right? It, that would be assuming if a contractor had to do all of it. Right. Well, with us. We because should. when this was originally made up, that's why I said it was partially updated, um, we were still doing brush pickup, so our crews really didn't or could not have the time to do any bike path maintenance. So I would hope that the cost of this would be a fraction of what we're talking about yeah, and these are conservative estimates, so kind of a little hopefully 
higher than what they would actually be. It would have been higher for, for a, uh, a contractor to do it, but I'm saying in-house right. we should be looking at what, a third of that is? Probably. Right. Okay. It makes a little better sense, and if that's the case, is trying to stay on budget to get things done, that's, that's obviously the objective. Right, and I think once we start doing more things in-house, we'll add a column to see what the actual cost was so you can see what the benefit savings is for the projects for mm -hmm. when we do do things in-house. Good. And once we get a little, a few more under our belt. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess to kind of jump the gun a little bit, got you guys... Uh, I realized I was thinking about public comment, but I wasn't thinking about put, uh, that, uh, that you were already on the agenda when I was saying that. So uh, uh, we've kind of jumped ahead with the f updates from the uh, Forest Preserve and the Park District. Uh, do we have grant updates then, Tyler? Um, for the bike paths, connections at Kohler Fields and Lakewood Mill, ID and our staff came out and did their final inspection. There's still a couple items that need to be installed, like safety bollards at the um, trailheads, but um, that looks to be good. We're waiting for our final invoice once those final finishing touches are complete, mm -hmm. and then we should be able to get the money reimbursed. So, okay. so that's positive. That's a 2014 grant that <laughs> I'll be glad to finally be able to say we did it. <laughs> no, it is great. Uh, I've, I've been on it a couple times now, and it's phenomenal that it opens it up to all those homes back there. And another grant piggybacking off of that one, uh, the grant from the DCEO that also is funding that project, uh, and got the final agreements for, and yeah, once we get the final invoice, then we can send it to them too. So in theory, we shouldn't have to put any money towards it, or we'll be reimbursed for it. I know we did the we got grants for the engineering studies in front of Village Church. Uh, any other news on that? What's transpiring? Are we going to have any chance to get more money to finish that off, and you know have a new path in front of that once they do, or do you know? I wish I had better news for that one. That was my only other update for grants. Oh, just two or three weeks ago, we got the notification from the Cook, from Cook County that we did not get that grant. That's too bad. And Chicago got about a third of the money, and then the rest went to more inner ring suburbs. So I'm hoping to get it. I'm, I apply for it every year, so. So we didn't get it this year, but we might apply for it next year and possibly get it? Doesn't hurt to try. OK. For my own edification, who applies for the Village of Bartlett for these type of I do. Um, and then for the uh, local technical assistant grant that we received from CMAP, oh, yeah. finally moving forward with that. It's taken a long time. They awarded it to us a few months ago. Um, they're hoping to start with us for the meetings in two months. That's the grant to do a bike path plan in conjunction with Streamwood. So they said we'll probably start that process in about two months, and they anticipate it will take 18 to 24 months to complete. So we will definitely keep you updated on that progress and when we have meetings and things like that, since we only meet quarterly as a committee, um, so that you guys are obviously invited to all of that. And I'm sure, I know there will be public meetings and things like that, but mm -hmm. you'll definitely be informed. Have you met yet? No. No, okay. Yeah, they were saying they might send us like a draft scope of work in October. Right. So, and we'll share we'll share that with you to see if there's anything that you think is lacking or needs to be added to that. So, please do. I said, please, please do, please share. <clears throat> that I would say covered kind of our old business, but I'm just curious, as from a new business standpoint, if either of you two have anything you'd like to bring up and discuss from a new uh, business standpoint regarding the bike and run paths. 
Um, I do. I've got a handful of things, okay. and Thank we're uh, doing good on time here. So, um, uh, pavement striping. Um, do I submit a go request for that? Are those even called go requests anymore? Uh, yeah. I've identified a couple crosswalks that are missing um, along South Bartlett Road, right behind the Jewel. There's that uh, townhome subdivision there. Mm. At Hawk Hollow, the Lizzo Hawk Hollow. Yes, that's it. There are no, uh, the path is a nice wide, fast path, and then there's no crosswalks at the intersections. Is it uh, crossing South Bartlett or is it for the individual streets? For the individual streets. Okay, so that'd be Orchards Pass. Um, and that would be Partridge and Orchards Pass and Foster. So, again, should I submit a go request, or how do we? You can, su I always recommend that people submit go requests just so we can track it. Even okay. if I'm doing complaints, I still do the go request. I like to see, be able to keep tabs sure. on the complaints like that. Okay. It, it, it helps from a staffing point to make sure things are getting complete. Okay. And then to, to continue the striping, um, a double yellow line on Munger, just south, just north of Army Trail. There's a hill there, and in the past three months since our last meeting, there have been two incidents where um, cars have tried to pass bikes going up that hill, and oncoming cars are coming up as well. And in one case, the bikes hit the, the shoulder. In one case, the car on the coming hit the shoulder. And there's not really a shoulder there. Um, so just from a safety perspective, uh, there's double yellow lines at the railroad tracks uh, north of uh, Forest Preserve Drive, but south of there, to, between there and Army Trail, those hills don't have no passing double yellow lines. And that's a, it's a safety hazard. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's bad. All right. Um, uh, I've got a question for both Park District and Forest Preserve while well, we're both here, is that there is a Forest Preserve here behind the community center called Wayne Grove, which we talked about on the front head. I, uh, front side of it. Well, behind the forest, or behind the community center, there, there's a great trail back there that is completely overgrown. It looks like it was cleared out because the, the, the tree, the trees were cut out to a width of about eight feet, but all the small, like the ground foliage has grown up so much. Um, is there any chance we can get that re-cut? Or I guess who's, who's... Are you talking like the wood chip trail? No, not the wood chip trail. That, that's the O'Brien the O'Brien Woods. O'Brien Woods is great. That's in great shape, but um, uh, but I'm talking about the path behind the community center. It's on a Google map. Uh, I'll bet uh, not a whole lot of people go there, but it's um, it's in need of some shape, in need of some uh, some work. No, no. I, I can we can pull up Google Maps and I can show you. It's, it's, is it on there? Uh, is it on here? It might be an informal pathway that people have done on their own that isn't necessarily part of a plan. So I can't recall one back there myself. Well, this is what you get when you look up at Google. There is a path there. I don't know. I'm just wondering. Which one are you talking about? So this, so this is O'Brien. That's fine. There's a, a, but over here, this is. This is a path. Yeah, is it a pa like? Is it paved? It's not paved. Nope. It's not uh, paved. No, it's, it's just a, a trail. Or just a trail. That's. Uh, I, you know what it is? It's a horse trail. That's what it is. I'm pretty certain. Would that be correct from the forest preserve perspective? You want to see the map? Could it be? I can see my Google Yep. I'm, uh, I'm pretty. Could I see that for a moment? Sure. Thank you. Here, you I'm, can have a copy. Yeah. Thank I, you. I, I am pretty. Those in the district that are, are fire -breaking? Yeah. As I recall, with the proximity to that horse farm, that's that's a horse trail. I'm pretty, I'm almost 100. percent Yeah, because it did. There, there was part of the trail that went into the horse farm. Yeah. So and I stopped there and turned around, but yeah. So it's not paved. No, it's 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 a very rough path. Yeah. Logs across it, uh, some rocks and areas. Um, you know, obviously the undergrowth and everything, but. Yeah, I've I've done I've gone out there on a mountain bike before and gone that loop back in there, and then I realized it's it's mostly for horses is what it's really for. So um, 
that's the reason why. They're, they're, you know, mm -hmm. We can talk about it, but I think it's a moot point. I don't think it's going to be a bike path. It's not intended for a bike yeah. path. It's a, it's a horse trail. So. Mm. Okay. Should it, should I put your name down for the uh, policeman to go out there? And <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, good point. But now that you've, you made me think about that, I've been on that several times myself, especially yeah. when my kids were scouting and stuff. Mm -hmm. We'd yep. we'd hike back there with backpacks, preparing to go to Philmont and stuff, and. Uh, you know, you loop that a few times, and it, it's a rough trail, but that's what it's intended to be. I'm 99.9% I'm, uh, .9 confident in that. Okay. A um, couple more items. Um, incomplete trails. Um, so there are three that, I've, uh, that I know of, and when I say incomplete, what I mean is we have a, a new uh, 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 commercial or, you know, something development. So one is the, the Artist Senior Center. There's uh, right there on 59 across from the Home Depot. Uh, I'm sure as part of the plan, they put this nice path in um, that doesn't go, doesn't go to anywhere or start from anywhere. It, uh, it needs about 30 feet on the north side to get into the resident or the or retail development there. It needs about, well, it, it would need some, uh, some an agreement with the, um, the, the Lutheran Church over there to get all the way to the next road there. Um, there's also another one. So the new strip mall behind the Starbucks on Army Trail. There's a, you know, a nice wide path they built there that it's about 50 feet short of connecting to the Starbucks parking lot. Um, and then there's a new residential development um, over by um, the ski hill. Um, it's called Barlett Ridge. And the name of the road is High Point Court. At the very end of it, on the eastern end, there is a path that goes toward the southwest it's, it looks like it's going to connect up to Peregrine Park, but it stops. Is there any way that we can, when we do these, these unit developments and these approvals, that we can have the paths completed instead of just on the property that they own? Which I get it, I get it. That's, that's you know, they're, they're being responsible to their property, mm -hmm. but the property that's not theirs, and it, it leaves a, a stub trail. Um, can we, is there a, can we be representatives of the planning, planning unit development meetings that, that these go on? Because obviously there's discussion about the path, but there's not discussion about completing the path. The issue number one is money. Uh, <laughs> it's the funds, I'll be, sure, I'll sure. be honest with that. Um, like for Route 59 and Army Trail Road, like there is a plan mm -hmm. for the bike paths to go th to the intersections. Okay. So what we try to do whenever a development occurs and there is a bike path planned, we get the developer to put in their portion. Mm -hmm. That's the chance we have to get it at no cost to the building. We understand that. Completely. So that's what we do. The I know the developer was in some talks with the park district for Peregrine Park at Bartlett Ridge. Okay. So there are discussions going on regarding that one. We do try to get they're supposed to go to the property line, so is Bar is Artis not to the property line? It is. It is. Okay. But, but again, it's, it needs such a small portion on the north end, um, and it would need a larger portion on the southern end to make it whole. But it would open up all those homes back there to be able to ride to Dogfather and Oberweiss. And right now they can't because they're, you can't ride on 59 with children. You absolutely right. cannot. Um, and then to weave around in that subdivision would just, you know, kind of defeats the purpose. Right. So, but like even IDOT requires as part of the complete streets, they have to put in, as development occurs, they have to put in the bike path, which we're all in favor mm -hmm. of. But we can't financially put in the rest just when the one is, when one segment is completed. But what we could potentially do is add it to the list. Right. And, uh, right. you know, adding these things to the list, depending on priorities uh, and the monies available, would at least potentially at least mm -hmm. right and having some segments in helps us get grants so you can, sure this is a, this is a path that goes nowhere we need there's a reason why we're applying for this grant we're trying to get the connectivity that we want mm -hmm. so there is a strategic plan in place to actually have these sort of random segments mm -hmm. completed um, it does serve a purpose 
and so okay. just having them f give us money to do in the future it's nice having it done yeah um, is there any way and I know this is a stretch but to have the developer who's developing that property complete the path you know maybe call it goodwill I don't know maybe I don't know I don't know Good luck with that one. Yeah. Uh, as we Typically, try to be... like recapture fees, like if you, someone's putting something, that's where the next user gets a significant benefit. Like if the person's putting in sand, like water, and mm -hmm. it's going through another property, obviously that's saving the next person. Yeah. The bike path doesn't have that same sort of uh, benefit in the developer's eyes. Good choice of words there. Okay. That in. Okay. Okay. I, I, I understand. I mean, I get it. Um, we would love to be able to put everything in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the village. We would it, love it. From the board standpoint, we'd love to do those things. Yeah. I mean, but you can't force the adjoining property or the person that's putting the money in to begin with. He's saying, I'm putting enough in. I'm, I'm not going to put any hmm. more in, you know, I, goodwill or not. So Could a TIF be used, like for those adjoining properties? Depends on where it's at, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's in a TIF district. But okay. I don't, I don't know even about that, if, if bike paths are included in the TIF or not. Um, they could be. They could be. Could they, they can, yeah, anything can be. Anything, yeah, anything that's going to be giving some sort of tax yeah. increase could be used for TIF money. But we have very limited, we only have a handful of TIF districts. Most properties in the village aren't within one. Gotcha. Okay. But nonetheless, it can be, you, you've got down the areas you suggested, and we can at least look at putting these on the list. Is that, right. is that possible? Yeah. As we get the segments in, we add them to the map, and that makes it very obvious where we have. And the earlier things you you said about you putting into the what, go the uh, the go request the go the request government can, outreach. Can this just be instead of him going and having to put this in the go request? Can this just be cited as we're directly asking staff to do that now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Two more items. I'm, I'm, um, one room here, new development. So there, uh, and this really boils down to the West Bartlett Road Trail going west of the Westridge subdivision. There's that new subdivision in King County there. Um, the, the path stops, they, it stops, I don't know, maybe a block or two before Route 25. Um, is there plans to extend that? And then on the, on the flip side of that, there's a new development on the South Elgin side of 25 there that just, I, I was just past there today that they're, the road was closed, they're, they're cutting it up. Are we going to get that trail extended to the, the prey path? I know that plan is on, is the bike path and the South Elgin portion is shown on their plan. So that okay. will be installed for at least where the development's occurring. I don't yeah. know if it goes, I don't believe it goes all the way to 25. The extent of their development. Uh, I want to say it's a little bit short. I want to say it's, okay. but they're putting in the segment where the development is occurring. So there okay. will be that segment. And I know that the developer that owns the lot that you're speaking of in Bartlett at the southeast corner yep. of Route 25 and West Bartlett, he has come before the board on several occasions and said that they will be putting that in. Okay. The date that he had said that was going to happen has passed, but that is still something that staff is still pursuing to have that installed sooner rather than later. Okay. Because right, that would be a fantastic addition to the Bartlett Trail system, even though part of it's South Elgin. <clears throat> letting all those Westridge residents get to the Prairie Path right. would be just phenomenal. Now you just got to get South Elgin to vote for it. Yeah, well, it sounds like if you set up South Elgin, and I've seen the map. The, it's on their map, but is it in part of this development that they're making? It is. It is. What's um, South Elgin's plan, I want to say, I don't think they anticipated that development occurring as soon as it did, okay. because their segment from 25 to the Prairie Path was, I believe, part of their long range, like thir within the next 30 years. Yeah, right. I, which I thought was not that optimistic, but... <laughs> I'm thinking it will happen much quicker than that to so okay. get the rest of those segments filled in. Okay. Is there some way that we can, here again, direct staff to uh, talk to the South Elgin uh, planning mm -hmm. and find out if there's some update that we can get on this? And is it is it cited now to be coming up sooner than later? Okay. Uh, I'd like to see that, really. Okay. okay. I can contact their planner. Because I know Elgin has a bike committee. Does South Elgin have any type of 
They don't have a committee, but they do have they do have a formal plan. Okay. Okay. So they should know. Somebody should know them. The, yes. The, Okay, and then my last item is trail signage. How are we looking with the, um, the North Central DuPage Regional signage through Hawk Hollow? Um, and then all of the, um, the trail crossing signs where the path cuts through between a stop sign and the cross street. What did, Tyler and I went out and we looked mm -hmm. at where we wanted all the signage. I've got a list. Yeah. And then did Dan, have you heard from the sign shop? So, in kind of an interesting development with that. Uh, we actually recently got complaints about the bike route signs being installed in certain neighborhoods. The so one on street, the, for on street paths, you mean? Or. The, the bike sign being installed in a certain neighborhood, you got complaints from the residents on having, is that what you just said? Mm -hmm. So the residents weren't happy that the bike sign was being installed. They don't want to promote I see. the bike route. Just, so now we're trying to figure out, all right, what's a happy medium? I see. Okay, well, I, I don't, the signs that I'm asking for are not um, identifying bike paths. It's, it's for safety. It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a safety issue. It's not a, you know, and I, I'm kind of baffled by that comment that people don't want to advertise their own bike paths, but um, mine, mine are more about when there's a stop sign and cars, you know, don't even stop at the stop sign, they roll through it, but there's a crosswalk and there's a path there, um, you know, to inform those vehicles that there are, that it's, a, it's, a, it's a path. Um, so I think it's a safety thing more than a identifying paths. Have you given your list to staff? I haven't. I have not, but I will. So yeah. uh, that would be good if you make a copy or send it sure. to Yeah, if you could send that Tyler. to us and then yep. Tyler and I can go out mm -hmm. and take pictures of some of them. Sure. Because if there is a stop sign there before the path. Mm -hmm. And a line. In theory, they should stop there, so. Yes, yes, exactly. And that's why I think that a sign would help more of a PD that. I think a sign, you know, the, the triangle sign with the bike or a pedestrian um, would help enforce that, you know, hey, I better stop at that line. Because I've seen it on numerous occasions where the cars just fly up to it and they, just, they get as close to the cross street as possible and mm -hmm. not, you know, not paying attention. And a lot of them are even blind. So that's part of the problem, too, is there's, there's some, some trees that are grown over so that you can't even see the path necessarily, or if there's anybody on it, so to speak. Uh -huh. um, and that's where it's a safety concern. Because sometimes, like, um, you know, at least with, with bicyclists, you know, when they're moving, sometimes they're moving. And if they're on a, you know, 10 foot wide path, you know, we, we, we'll take a look and we'll slow down when we get there. But sometimes, you know, a car will stop it right in front of you and you're clipped in, your pedals are, your feet are clipped in your pedals, you can't actually get out quickly. Um, it's, it's just a matter of time, I think, before there's, a, there's some injury. Yeah, send us, send us the list. Sure, if we'll not, do. We can kind of take pictures of all the suggested locations. We'll do. I don't think striping would be that expensive. If we can, you know, I can't imagine it's going to cost thousands of dollars to stripe some streets here and there. Right. Uh, so if it's something that is a safety issue, I'd be all on board to, you know, push that a little bit with Public Works to get that done. If we can, if we can move forward on that, and uh, uh, take some of these uh, suggestions from John and and push it forward. I, I appreciate you making the effort. It's almost like we had Terry Wood on the uh, committee. <laughs> Yeah, lists are always the best way to get these accomplished. Yeah. It is. Because it's a check off. All right. Yep. We'll do. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other comments or questions for staff or for the committee? If not, then I am going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second it. Motion was made by. John and seconded by Barry and I say our